So, I'm really interested to get you, because oh, yeah. I've seen you at a bunch of conferences. I think I saw you in El Salvador. Yes. It's a different thing on. Okay. Um, but I've not had like time to learn about your journey. Okay. Um, so, let, like, tell the audience who you are, what yeah. you've been doing. Well, well, thank you so much, man. <laughs> it's an honor to meet you and talk to you, man. It's an honor to meet you. No, yeah. I've, I've heard a lot about you, man. I've heard a lot about you because I'm new to the Ecospace 2021 Bitcoiner. Is it really? Yeah. I thought you were all joking. No. You managed to make quite an impact. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm really new into the eco space and I'm here because of Rajshree, who has helped me a lot to reach here. Um, bye, hi, everybody. Namaste. My name is Paco. I'm from India. Okay. And in August 2021, it was a full moon night. My friend gives me a call. Yeah. He's like, hey, Paco, do you want to travel the world? Wow. And I'm like, yeah. Of course. He's like, uh, but you have to travel on Bitcoin. And I'm like, Okay, but what is Bitcoin? He's like, here, I'm giving you this book. Read this and come to me. I'm like, how will we get the money? He's like, it will be crowdfunded. I'm like, okay. I start reading the book. Since I'm an Indian boy, gold standard. We have gold. We worship gold in our yeah, house. We course, are generation yeah. gold. Yeah. And we, understand the, yes, and we understand the importance of gold. I read the book and I'm like... <laughs> like, you know, like the fire hydrant that opens into your mouth and you're just like... <laughs> You're like, whoa. And I went to Google. I figured out Felix Weiss. There's a yes. guess. I was going to say, because he's a friend of mine. And like, dude, I'm, dude. He inspired, cause I think this, because this is why I wanted to talk to you, because back when I first started really getting into Bitcoin, yeah. he was so inspirational because he's going on this journey around the world. And he was like, um, he was doing it. He was funding it on Bitcoin. And then he was having to like pay for things in Bitcoin and onboard people. And uh, it was such an inspirational journey which he was having at that time I think for Bitcoiners so it's really nice to see you picking up the mantle and doing the same thing yeah man and it's so funny He's, he did 27 countries and this is my 27th country now wow so I was just like okay I read the book and I went down and I went down the rabbit hole like everyone goes down and I was like let's just do so Felix Weiss I started watching what he was writing blogs yeah. and I was looking at blogs and then one day he writes the final blog he's like this is too much work. <laughs> I am not going to write anymore. And I'm like, shit, now whom do I look up to? <laughs> then I found BitRefill. Yeah. Then I found Trabala.com. I was like, okay, let's start. 21 days later, started the journey called Run With Bitcoin. The reason Run With Bitcoin because I love running. It's my meditation. Mm -hmm. It's my Zen mode. Like people do yoga or some people do writing. Some do coding. Some do everything. And the journey started. I remember the first Bitcoin meetup I did in Bengaluru, Bangalore in India. Somebody came and gave me $200 worth of Bitcoin. I had sold my furniture. I got some fiat. I sold it and I got Bitcoin for it. So I had like $200 plus $200, $400. I'm like, all right, the journey starts. And this is how the journey started. The purpose of the journey was simple. How do you know Bitcoin is hard money? By using it for day-to-day -day life as Felix was doing it around. And I started getting, I started buying milk for Bitcoin, haircut for Bitcoin, coconut water for Bitcoin. In India itself, in 16 different cities, I hosted 16 different Bitcoin meetups. Just to share the importance of what is Bitcoin, what is hard money. Because I do not know blockchain. I'm not a techie. I do not know nothing about what you're creating on the other side. I'm like, what is hard money? Mm. And I was able to share that. And then there was a Bitcoiner who bought me a ticket. He's like, no, you're going abroad. Went to UAE, Thailand, Cambodia, Singapore. And majority of it was in Africa, I did 17 African countries. And I would just say last thing is we are very early. Very, very early guys. It's so true. It's very so true. early bro. Anybody who starts hyper Bitcoinization, yeah. it sounds good on Twitter. Yeah. <laughs> because keyboard warriors. But you go down on the reality, you'll be just like, bro. Using it. Yeah. There's all oh. these potential future users, these uh, future coiners. Yes. Yeah, which we need to yes. get on the system. But do you think the Nostar stuff will help that? Yeah. Um, do you think the Nostar things will help on board? Yes, Nostar will help in one important thing is because it, can, it is not centralized, right? And in that important thing, because as of now, I'll give you Africa, 17 countries. Africa gives you free Facebook and free WhatsApp. If you have taken a SIM card here, they give you free Facebook and free WhatsApp. And Facebook and WhatsApp feeds you what content they want to feed you. Mm. When you have free Facebook and free WhatsApp, you'll consume that only for free rather than buying a 2GB or a 4GB data. Oh. Yeah, so Nostal coming into that way is a bet against all of this, but the centralized powers in play, when the, the advertising and everything in play, it's a big challenge because people have lack of information in this part of the world. If you look at my journey, it was Africa and Latin America and prior. They have lack of information. The information doesn't reach them. Let's say we are talking in English. By the mm. time it is converted to Hausa, yeah. which is spoken in Nigeria, yeah. the emotions are gone. Yeah. 
Everything is changed. Yeah. The information is gone. The code has changed. And by the time it reaches, it is just reached that emotion, anger. No. What's it called nowadays? This is called the white um, colonialism. Yeah. The white, but not the white. The white techno colonialism. With yeah. technology, you're coming and giving me your coin called Bitcoin, and you want me to use your money now. And you're like, no, 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 no it's yeah. happening. Yeah. This is something that I heard, and I was like. Phew. Yeah. So I hope so. <laughs> no, that's that's a, that's real insight to be honest, which I you know I haven't I haven't thought about for a while. But yeah. it's it's the the lack of information, isn't it, which is yeah. out there for for people in in different no, not English speaking because most of the the Bitcoin uh, information is is, is English speaking information, isn't it? True. Yeah. I mean, a lot of it gets translated, but yeah, yeah. I like that. I love the the, the analogy with gold as well. I'd never really thought of that, but I, I did hear. It's, isn't like most of the gold like round the necks of Indian mothers and, and grandmothers like most of the gold <coughs> on the planet? That's true. Like we get generational wealth. We start from our, let's say, great grandparents had, say, say, 10 grams of gold. They passed on to the grandparents 10 grams. The grandparents added another 5 grams. 15 grams passed it to my dad. 15 grams. My father will add another 5 grams. 20 grams. It's my duty to pass it on and keep going on and pass it on because gold is considered auspicious and it is considered very religious. It is the scarcest metal in earth mm. and it is always considered as... Is it the scarcity which makes gives yeah. it kind of religious... Exactly, because problem. it is so scarce like God. <laughs> oh. We don't see God, but we believe in God. It's like Satoshi Nakamoto for us right yeah. now. We don't see him, but yeah. he's there with yeah. the one million coins, right? <laughs> yeah. And but, yeah, but it, we use it in all our temples. We use it in all our places. And gold is very auspicious. In the school, I remember 2003, 2004, they're still teaching us, I guess till date, uh, we are based on gold standard because I questioned my dad. I'm like, so we can print how much ever we want. He's like, no, you keep gold as the central, the central bank and the central bank prints money. Yeah. But as you grow up 20 years later, I'm hit by inflation. I can't even afford a house in India, man. No. My father says that like, go buy me a house in Mumbai. It's a hundred thousand dollars, bro. Yeah. And then you're signed up for a 25 year loan. Yeah. And the 25 year loan by the time you pay and you're done paying six times your annual salary as well So you can hardly pay it when you are paying it and once you're done paying there's somebody knocking on your door called the doctor yeah. And then the doctor starts taking his fees because you have lost your health in trying to make yeah. your wealth yeah. And it's just it's like a cycle and we have just lost it all yeah. we have lost it all like I for me I just felt like how do I put this message out so I go down around Find the crypto people. I literally find them and they come mm. Come because what happens is we start bullying Mm. In the bullying process, there comes these horns in us, and the horns in us gives out this energy which really makes it like us versus them. And in that entire process, I'm like, hey, it's no us versus them. These are the first people who will understand Bitcoin. Mm. These are the first people who will understand. And these are the people, they will adopt Bitcoin. Mm. And this is what I understood. And this is why I go down to just share the importance of hard money. I really hope I can continue this and finish this to share this message. Yeah, it's, a, it's, it's beautifully put. And it's interesting as well because clearly there is some sort of spiritual aspect to Bitcoin. Yeah. Like people kind of almost treat it in, with religious context and they, they in, as a cultural phenomenon, as an ideology. Um, but then to, to actually the way in which you've explained it, 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 it you know, it, it doesn't feel strange for it to be spoken about Bitcoin, Bitcoin spoken about for its purity almost, you know. Um, uh, I know as well, like a lot of the Tibetan monk types, they're, they're heavily into the free and open source and um, some of them like Bitcoin as well, so it's, it's very interesting. To I know one monk. Okay. He's in India right now. He has, he's a Bitcoiner. Huh? <laughs> and is that sort of the, for that reason? Yeah. <laughs> because of his purity? Yeah, it's a purity. He is a monk, man, like he, and he had anger issues, but he, he has a Bitcoin and he's teaching his people out there. Wow. <laughs> this has been an absolutely inspirational conversation. Thank you so much, Paco. And it was great to like yeah. hear about your story as well. And like now I now I know, you know. Yeah, man. Because I always wanted to have the conversation because yes. I kept seeing you in conferences and I'd be busy and I'd be chatting. Yes. And I'd be like, this dude's doing something interesting. No, man. I really thank the community because the community came together to support me and to fund me. Mm. See, I came in as a no one. I was on zero subscribers and zero followers. People did not know That's who I am. Yeah. And people thought I'm a scammer because it was a bull run. I started at $60,000 and now it reached out to $16,000. So I opened Blue Wallet. I'm going to come down clean on everyone. I opened more than 500 Blue Wallets for people on Lightning. And now I am considered a scammer too. <laughs> How do I find those 500 people P, and tell them like your Lightning node is gone? Oh shit, yeah. Yeah, I, I, there's no difference between me and some other person right now. And I, I, I had that the day Lightning Wallet was going down and I was in Bitcoin Beach, Brazil. And I was just like, shit, 
because I'm here fighting to send those 10,000, 10,000 sats out, just the minimum I could send, yeah. whole day, all the transactions are 10,000 sats. And I'm like, dude, that poor guy whom I give 200 rupees, that's like $3 or $5, yeah. $3, $5. What do I tell that? And, and like, um, Eko's uh, the blue wallet developer, he's a stand-up dude. Yeah. And, um, and actually, out of all the wallets, the custodial wallets, just because he's such a, le a legit developer, and he's also, you know, he's a hacker, like he knows yeah. how to do his shit. Um, out of all the custodial wallets, that wallet would have been one where the funds, the, the funds would be there, you know. Insane amount. And if you, yeah, but if you, if and for Bitcoiners, yeah, like we'll feel comfortable DMing him yeah. and then asking for our funds and blah blah blah, and pulling the funds out at the right time because we hear the news on Twitter. Yeah, they're going to close down the yeah. the uh, L and uh, L and D hub in Blue yeah. Wallet. But then you're right. For normal people who've been onboarded onto that wallet, they're like, oh, this doesn't work. Do you know what's next? Wallet of Satoshi. Yeah. Hey, dude, and then you have people fighting for custodial and non-custodial and then it just goes for a fight and I'm like, wait a minute, we are unable to onboard. Yeah. The process is onboarding. See, Lightning made it so easy. That's what Felix's journey was so inspirational to me because he did it on-chain. Yeah. And I'm doing this on Lightning. With Bitcoins. Yeah, like but he did, he, I asked him, I still ask him, like, dude, how many Bitcoins? He's like, I'm not telling anyone how many Bitcoins I spent. <laughs> and I was like, okay, I totally get it because the back then you don't even know what you... thousands of that. Yeah, yeah. And, and he's right now, he's still a part, he's a very integral part of the Bitcoin ecosystem yeah, yeah. he is right now in Hong Kong as we speak yeah. and he, he attends all the conferences yeah. I and I would say guys Henry, you all will be listening I'm in this conference because I got a flight ticket to be here it is not that I choose to come here I get a flight ticket to come here yeah. that's why I was able to be here yeah. and El Salvador also a Bitcoin bought me a ticket yeah. to reach there that's another thing as well like, that's almost like living on faith it's cool man I think so this is why I, I, I always like bow down and I say till the day you feel good you feel it's like you say spiritual you feel it yeah. you enjoy your work yeah. And the things flow, you know? Yeah, it nourishes you spiritually, I think. Yeah. Um, and maybe that's where big, what Bitcoiners feel. They feel that kind of spiritual nourishment. Yes. And then that then gets translated through the ideology and culture. Yes. Um, but so what's next? I have got, uh, so the plan was to do 40 countries. So I'm, this is the 27th country. I've got 13 countries to go. So I'll be doing the lightning. It's called the Lightning America, the LATAM region. Mm. So I'll be in this part of the world, Mexico, Guatemala, Honduras, Nicaragua. There's so much happening around here. Yeah, we do not know what's happening in the Caribbean. So finish that yeah. part of the world, wrap that out. And by the end of the year, that's it. Yeah. Uh, pull out, take a step back. Right uh, and next year, yeah, next year, that's the next year starting Jan, Feb, March, I would start approaching a Bitcoin company. Since now I know Bitcoin communities in 40 countries yeah. that I have, I personally would have started like seven of them. Yeah. And that's like a big win for me. Yeah. And so take that 40 communities and start connecting with people because I'm a people's person to just to see how I can integrate what I've learned, but join a Bitcoin company to put my energy rather than just side for shouting in front of camera and moving like a nomad. I would like to put my energy towards one project and do that forward. So really, thank you, man. Thank you, dude. Thank you so An much. Honor. Thank, thank you, you so much, man. Thank Cheers. you so much. Thank Peace. You. He's done a great job, man, for Bitcoin Beach Brazil. <laughs>